All right, guys, welcome, welcome back to the WeMax YouTube platform. I'm your host, JD. And as you saw over there, my virgin, Mr. Tactical Manager, Filippo, here um, to represent the United States and our big clash. I wouldn't say it's such a big clash because I'm not so confident, but I'm here to hear his side of the story, why I should be confident. So how are you doing, um, Filippo? Well, am I here to to make you more confident or like, yes I, I of course of course i saw the rasta and i've gotten deflated so i am wondering let me know what you're what flaccid now as derek from the stray red card would say the rasta so, made you flaccid yeah so what 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 on this rasta now because i heard a few persons on twitter seems like they are not so pleased about the rasta saying that they could get a certain and certain things so what's so much about this rasta that you don't like for the U.S., uh, yes, it's more of like nitpicking, right? Um, let's go through it. So goalkeepers, he's bringing four goalkeepers for whatever reason. I don't know why you need four goalkeepers for two games. Um, one of them is Diego Coach, and I don't expect him to play at all. He's 18. He plays for Barcelona's B team. Probably just bringing him to get him used to it. So truly the three goalkeepers are Patrick Schulte from the Columbus Crew, Zach Steffen from the Colorado Rapids, and Matt Turner from Crystal Palace. And our goalkeepers stink. That, that's literally the best way to put it. They stink. They're not good. Patrick Schulte is still young enough that he could become good one day. But I, I would argue he's one of the weak links for the Columbus crew right now. He was one of the reasons why they got eliminated early in the playoffs. Patrick Schulte. He was our goalkeeper in the Olympics. He's very shaky. He's caught flat-footed a lot. He doesn't make himself big coming out of the goal. It's just like he's still young. He's 22, 23. I think he's 23 now, but not not someone that will have a major impact right now. Zach Steffen's not very good, man. Um, he was one of the reasons, too, that the Colorado Rapids got knocked out. And many were saying that one of the reasons why he was called in is because he's good with his feet. One of the goals that the Rapids conceded was because he kicked the ball on the opponent into the goal. That was one of the goals. So he's not that good with his feet either. His shot stopping is very bang average at best. And then you have Matt Turner, where when Matt Turner is in form, his shot stopping is fine. I, I can't really complain about that. You've seen it before. Like, shot yes, stopping, yes. he's fine. He's horrendous with his feet, even when he's in form. When he's in poor form, he's bad with his feet. When he's in good form, it still looks like he's in bad form with his feet. So, um, Jamaica playing out of the target back. the goalkeepers. All right. Yeah, yes. we well, the U.S. shouldn't be trying to play out of the back with these goalkeepers. But Diego Cochin is really good at his feet, but he's probably not going to play. So uh, defenders is an interesting one because if you look at the defenders list, he brought five fullbacks. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, five center backs and mm -hmm. only two fullbacks, only the two starters. There's no backup, no real backup. So McKenzie's the center back. Tim Ream is a center back, but Tim Ream has been playing as a left back in MLS. So maybe Tim Ream is the backup left back. That is possible. Uh, Chris Richards uh, is back with the national team. But here's the thing. You talked about the Jamaica's roster inactivity. Chris Richards mm -hmm. hasn't played for, I think, like six or eight weeks because he was injured. And he yes. came back this weekend, made the bench for Crystal Palace, but didn't play. So Richards hasn't played in forever. Uh, I don't think he'll get minutes, even though he's probably our best left back. Anthony Robinson from Fulham, he's been one of the good ones, right? Starting for Fulham, playing well in the Premier League. He's our left back. Miles Robinson is there. That's another weak link that you might want to target, uh, Jamaica, Ooh, okay. if he plays. I think the two starting center backs might be like Mark McKenzie and Tim Ream. But you yeah. never know. Miles Robinson was terrible against Mexico last month. Terrible. Um then you have Joe Scali on the right back. He's a very reliable right back. He's actually the backup of Serginho Dest, but Dest is still injured with a torn ACL. Yes. Scali will be the right back, and, and Scali's fine. Like, our fullbacks are fine. As long as none of them get injured, Scali and Robinson, they're fine. Okay. And then the other center back is Austin Trusty, a center back that I have mixed feelings about in terms of, like, um, is he good or not? Like, he... Plays well in a game in the Champions League, but then sucks sometimes in a random game. Like he was really bad in the Premier League last year. Um, but again, it is a Premier League. So he's no Ethan Pinock, but he's also probably better than the other center backs of Jamaica. Midfield, and this is where it gets interesting. Brendan Aronson is listed as a midfielder. Yeah. I I know he's he's been playing as a midfielder for Leeds, mostly as a, a pressing 10. And I think that's how Pochettino sees him as a pressing 10. And I hate it. To me, he's a hustle merchant. He should be playing out wide. 
go hustle out wide. I want a creator in the midfield. He doesn't really provide that, but it looks like Pochettino will play him as a pressing 10 because he did that last camp. Uh, Gianluca Busio has been fine for Venezia in, in the Serie A, so Busio makes the roster. Johnny Cardoso has been really good for Real Betis in La Liga. He might start for the U.S., Johnny Cardoso. McKenney's back. McKenney's been good for Juventus in and out of the lineup, but scoring goals, getting assists. McKenney's been good. He's back. Yes. Um, hopefully he's not like, you know, a little bit overweight for a professional athlete, <laughs> McKenney, because when he's in shape, he's our best midfielder, in my opinion, when he's in shape. Um, so we'll see how McKenney looks. He's been looking good for Juventus. Aiden Morris is there. He's an okay midfielder from the English Championship, plays for Middlesbrough. Uh, Eunice Musa, very inconsistent, very yeah. inconsistent, but like has really good performances and really poor performances, can't really play well in the final third, can't progress the ball dribbling into midfield, but can't pass the ball. But again, he just locked in Vinicius Jr. So he can't. That's, what, that's what I was saying. That's what I was uh, Yeah, what he, you don't know what you're going to get. So, yeah, yeah, he's you don't know what you're going to get with Eunice Musa, but definitely a good player. Tenor Testman is an interesting one. He makes the roster. Um, he looked good in between these camps for Lyon in Liga. He had a few games here where he looked good. I'm interested in seeing what he'll do. I don't know if he'll start. The midfield will probably be something like Johnny McKenney and maybe Tillman or Johnny McKenney and Aronson at the 10. And then lastly, you have Malik Tillman. That's really good for PSV. Yes. But really bad for the national team. I guess he might be our Leon Bailey, right? Because Leon Bailey is usually good for club and terrible for the national team. He's our Leon Bailey. He like is destroying Girona in the Champions League, one of the best players in the air division, and then comes for the national team. He can't play well against Trinidad and Tobago in the US. So um that's our Leon Bailey for context. So well, I think that's gonna come up when, when we talk about the coach because sometimes a player can look bad under under a, a specific coach, but when he comes on to another coach, they can get the best out of them. What about yeah, that? Before that, you that get is to the true. forwards. But just to add a couple of things here, um our, our defenders, we are missing Cameron Carter Vickers. Mm -hmm. He was Vickers? supposed to be in the roster, but apparently he was a late scratch because he got injured or a knock for Celtic. Yeah. Probably his toe, his toe's always injured. I'm pretty sure this guy just bangs his toe on the bed every morning. Um, the other midfielder that is missing that's notable is Tyler Adams. He came back from injury with Bournemouth, even started this this weekend that we're recording this. But I think because of Tyler's injury history and he's not mm -hmm. 90 minutes fit, Pochettino's probably like, you know what, stay there. We don't need you to get injured again. Don't travel. Stay there. I think it's a bit risky because you could have probably brought Tyler and he could come off the bench, give him 15 minutes. He would add a lot of value. He did that. Like against what Manchester. he did the last time against Jamaica. City. <laughs> um, no, but he did it against Jamaica as well. Remember? Remember he yes. did him in the game? Yeah, yes. So, uh, so I, I think Tyler is a bit of a miss, but but I understand why they didn't bring him. I understand why. It, it makes sense. Uh, but it is a competitive game, so at the same time, you're like, I mean, you know, you gotta kind of gotta win this, right? It's not a friendly. They, they are overlooking Jamaica, and it could come back to um, give me some confidence. I wouldn't say that because the only one is Tyler Adams, and remember, Tyler Adams has been injured for like 18 months, yes, so yes, they're absolutely. probably afraid of him getting injured again. Um, like we're talking about a player that another injury could be like close to like, I, I don't want to be dramatic, but like close to career ending. Like the guy's been injured for like 18 months yeah, yeah, you so, can't, you can't and, before, and keeps you're, coming yeah, back. Makes sense. So makes sense. I don't want to say they're overlooking Jamaica because when you look at the roster, the best players are there. And, and yes, like, yes. look, Chris Richards is healthy, but barely playing they're like, no, nope, bring him in. We need him. So I wouldn't say they're overlooking Jamaica. Uh, and then up top, the forwards, Kate Cowell makes the roster. That's very iffy. Not really Ooh. a good player, like a lot of hustle, plays for Chivas, been doing fine. Yeah, the hustle, I like his hustle still. I, 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 that's what I'm saying. Are you not looking at what the coach bring in? Because remember, he's a high intensity coach, you know, that wants people that fight. Some of them, yeah, don't but Cal wasn't in out. the roster originally. What happened was oh, Haji yeah, okay, Wright okay. rolled his ankle this weekend for Coventry, he scored Ooh. and rolled his ankle, so Haji was going to be there. Um, and then I guess they needed a last minute replacement. Kate Cow is already here in North America, right? He plays in Mexico, yeah. bring him in. That's what I'm assuming. Then you have Ricardo Pepe that has been playing more for PSV. And when he plays, he scores mm -hmm. and he usually shows up for the US. I mean, Jamaica should know he scored against Jamaica in the past. Mm -hmm. So I think Ricardo Pepe will probably be the starter because Balogun's not there and Sargent's also not there. And even if Sargent was there, Pepe earned his start. 
Uh, Christian Pulisic, he's our best player, obviously. He's there. He's been having a good season with Milan. By far best player. Probably the best American player of all time. Best U.S. men's national team player of all time. Uh, and then you have Brendan Vasquez. He's a center forward from Monterrey, in Mexico. Ooh, Vasquez. We don't have uh, Balogun and we don't have Sargent. So it it was pretty much him. And he's a physical presence, right? He can win an aerial duels fight. Uh, not a bad player. Uh, he If Pepe's not performing, he'll probably come in. But Weya can also play as a striker because Weya played as a striker for Juventus this weekend, for example, a few times too. And then Weya is the next one. But Tim Weya... He's our best right winger, right? He'll be he's probably locked in to start locked in starter for us, but he is still suspended for one game. Uh be, yeah, because of the Panama thing. He punched the Panamanian player. In yes, the yes, 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 yes. I believe that that's the reason. So he's st- he shouldn't be available for the game in Jamaica. And okay. then he'll be available in the US. And then last you have Alejandro Zendejas that plays for Club America. He's okay as a winger, technical, but doesn't really offer too much. Which brings me to the point. So the game in Jamaica. Uh, the U.S. will be playing away. Tim Weah won't be available. And I think that Jamaica really struggle in the U.S. So to me, the key game is that one. Jamaica either wins in Jamaica or or it's over. Win in Jamaica. Yes. Not because so Tim Weah is going to... You're not gonna... seeing any Canadian thing. This is not no Drake thing. It's just if you don't win in Jamaica, you have no chance. That's what you're saying. I think if you don't win, I'll put it this way: if you don't win in Jamaica, you have a one percent chance because 1% chance. because because I mean, you I can't eliminate. Let, let's say it's a one-one draw. I can't eliminate Jamaica because then you have one game where anything and it's the can away happen. goal. No, a one-one draw will would still favor United States because they would have had, a, had an away goal right there. Yeah, yeah, but but overall, what I'm saying is like. Sure, if Jamaica loses 3-0 in Jamaica, then I'm going to say 0% chance. You're not yes, going through. Yes. And but if you, tie, if you tie the U.S., you have a shot. Now, if you lose in Jamaica, it's probably close to 0% if you lose in Jamaica. Okay. Because then we're going to go to St. Louis. It's also going to probably be kind of cold, um, which probably doesn't help Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I'm not yeah, This Jamaica squad, because now you have more local players in it and more Jamaican-born players in it, but the others are always England. So they are English, so it's kind of... It, it, it doesn't affect them so much. Yeah, you know? so, yeah, Jama- like, in St. Louis, it looks like it can be, like, in the 40s Fahrenheit at night, which is kind of cold. Uh, like, 32 would be zero, so it's it's probably like five degrees Celsius. It's pretty okay, chilly. That, that, that's that's definitely chilly. That's yeah, definitely it could chilly. be it could be cold in St. Louis. I don't know what it'll, the weather will be for the game because it's we're still kind of far, but it could be very chilly or cold at night. Uh, but then also way of coming back that'll help the U.S. playing at home. Right, the U.S. is much more comfortable at home than away. The biggest that's weakness of the fast. Berhalter era. Well, there were many weaknesses, but one of the biggest ones was that the U.S. couldn't win away from home. And box, box. we we just had a camp where the U.S. beat Panama in the U.S. <laughs> and when we went to play Mexico away, we looked symbolic, missing a lot of players. Sure, Pulisic didn't play, away, uh, McKenney, but we lost to Mexico away. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. The the key game for Jamaica is that one: win at home. If you lose at home, it's probably over. If you tie, you still have a little bit of a shot, but it's unlikely. Win at home if Jamaica wants to go through. All right, and and I I tend to agree with you. Um, I don't see any Canada, um, Canada thing, um, coming here. Sorry, Canadians, I'm not disrespecting you, but I'm I'm not seeing the Canadian thing because I thought that Canada kind of dropped their guard, make some substitutions, make some errors in the game as well, and uh, Jamaica capitalized on that. I think that these these players that are playing here, Jamaica, um, what United States is fighting for is to try and go places in the World Cup not to fight with CONCACAF teams. So I think their their pride is a little bit different. So if they go on to lose this, this will be big. This will be big. So um, what you made of um, Pochettino so far, uh, you like his direction that he's going in? Because I know that you, have, um, t- you don't have much time, so I want to kind of cap it at least 17 minutes. Yeah, it's um, that's an interesting question because he only had one camp, so it's... I think any actual judgment is a bit of an overreaction, right? We mm-hmm. need to give him some time. There's a few things I didn't like. Like I said, like he he seems to be leaning towards Brendan Aronson as a pressing 10 for the U.S. I'm not a big okay. fan of that. Sure, we're still missing Gio Reyna, right? He's injured. Maybe Gio will be the starter there. Clearly, Pochettino wants a team with a lot of intensity. He wants to press. He wants it. And we have to see. In last camp even against mexico we were missing like the entire starting 11 uh, just to name a few way wasn't there pulisic wasn't there balogun wasn't there 
Pepe wasn't there. McKenny wasn't there. Johnny wasn't there. Um, yeah, you, you it, missed, it, missed a lot of people. So Yeah, yeah. so it, it's hard for me to judge him right now. I guess like this camp will be a camp that we're, we're going to get to judge him quite a bit because he has most of the players now. I okay. mentioned a few were missing, but this is more or less most of the U.S. roster, maybe like three or four guys, which is normal, right, to miss a few guys. That's normal. So this will be the judgment. It's what I said. Um, we're not going to be too harsh on him because we could struggle to go through, but I think there are no excuses for him. He has to go through against Jamaica. Even if it's like a tight 1-0 win, like a mm -hmm. tough game, that's fine. But he has to go through. He can't be eliminated by Jamaica in the quarterfinals. It just can't happen. Like um, uh, This Jamaica squad, this one that we're talking on. This yeah, and, one. And, and, and maybe and if we... you had a better informed Jamaica team, you think it's possible. Are you just on your no, topical no, no. manager thing? You can't think, lose the Jamaica. I think even if Jamaica had everyone with a two games two game knockout round i think the us should be the favorites to go through yes that, that is but yes, if, if jamaica had everyone in form it would be pretty even like very close but it's what we talked about um if jamaica had everyone available and everyone was in form i would say that jamaica beating the us would not be an upset it would just yeah. they maybe they're a tiny bit worse like for example arsenal and manchester city I know Man City has been struggling lately, but can we agree that Man City has a better team by a little bit? Yes, yeah. yes, that is yeah. true. That's but if true. Arsenal beats Man City, it's not really an upset, right? It's like they beat Man City. Like it can happen. That, I'm not saying the U.S. And, and Jamaica are that level. They're far from that. Um, but I'm just saying that if Jamaica has everyone available and in form, them beating the U.S. would not be an upset. But with the current circumstances of Jamaica and having one game in Jamaica, one in the U.S., so two games favors the better team, I would say if, the, if Jamaica does pull through here, it would be an upset, just like beating Canada away last time was an upset. Yeah. All right. So um, before this is just for the first prediction in Jamaica. Um, what you think will happen? Now, give me a prediction what you expect. 1-1. One, one. I think it will end up with 1-1? One, one. Yeah. I, oh, I think I, I truly think the U.S. will struggle away against Jamaica. All I think right. they'll struggle. Right. I think it'll be 1-1 one, one in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying Jamaica is going to pull a, a master class. I think the U.S. will oh. play down. I think the U.S. So will underperform away. Confidence. You're taking it back. Oh, it is not because Jamaica is going to do anything. It's because J United States is going to be no, struggling to figure out things. I'm just being honest. You you gave me a bunch of names that are not going to be there. Like like you mentioned, Pinock might not will not be there. You're saying Leon Bailey's not in form. Antonio will be suspended for that game. Yes, that, all of those so, things are true. You know. So for it to be a draw, the U.S. has to play down. Like that, okay, that's what so I think will happen. Even the way it won't be, be there. Down. Okay. So I think it'll be 1-1, one, one, and then I believe, obviously, this is a very early prediction, right? We haven't seen the starting yeah. 11s. The first game hasn't played out. So I think it'll be 1-1, one, one. but then in the U.S., I think the U.S. will probably pull like a 2-0 win and, and qualify. Okay. Uh, maybe one go in the first half, one second go in the second half with Jamaica attacking. Uh, I think that's how it's going to play out. So I, I think the U.S. will advance. I just don't see it being easy. I just don't see it. All right. So people hear you. Hear you. Heard it from Mr. Filippo stating that it's going to be a little bit tougher in Jamaica, but he's going to beat us up um, in America. So let me know mm -hmm. your thoughts in the comment section and please go and subscribe to Filippo. Um, his link will be um, in the description. But you guys know him already. You, you can't avoid him. He will maybe, be there. Um, trolling us. All right. Yes. So thanks it again, Sir Filippo. Yeah. Thank you and good luck on Thursday. Hopefully you guys lose. Ha, 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 ha.